Hey everyone, welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. My videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting those like, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my return viewers, welcome back. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. The two stories that you will hear in this video today are both from Mandorf. One involves a lady meeting and walking with Jesus, the other, well, let's just say the gentleman wasn't so lucky, as he woke up in hell and was there for a while, before being saved by Jesus. I had a near-death experience after I'd been seriously injured in a near-fatal automobile accident, which caused me to stop breathing, necessitating the use of a ventilator and an accompanying coma. Since coming out of my coma, I've had vivid remembrances of the time I was on the other side of the veil in a heavenly realm. There was a bright mist permeating everything. The light was everywhere, it even passed through me. I can remember looking at my hand, and the light passed through it. I could see my hand was transparent, but this did not surprise me. As I walked with this heavenly personage, his countenance shone forth with such a brightness that I can't describe. I knew this heavenly personage was Jesus because I recognized him as a familiar friend. He didn't announce who he was because this wasn't necessary. I remember walking with Jesus, but we weren't walking in the physical sense, the best way I can describe our walking was that we were walking in mid-air, floating above the ground of this beautiful garden we were walking in. Everything in this garden had an overall whiteness and brightness about it. I was seeing the bright green of the plants. I could see the water, and a bright glow surrounded it, and the burbling of the water had a musical sound to it, this stream of water fairly sang. The water was so sparkling clear. I remember wanting to bend over and take a drink from the stream that was running through this garden we were walking through. When I tried to scoop up water with my hands, the water ran through my hands, literally, and it wasn't wet. Jesus stopped walking and looked at me while I was bent over trying to drink this water. I could feel his eyes on me. My thirst for this water, even though I wasn't able to put it to my lips and drink, it was gone at that moment. I can't describe the sensation I felt when the water was running through my hands, but I did feel something. I felt this overwhelming desire to experience everything about this garden. When Jesus and I talked it wasn't with our mouths, but I knew we were communicating, his countenance fairly shone, and how he felt about me shone forth about him. He simply exuded love and concern and caring for me just by standing there. The feeling of peace I felt was indescribable. I was given the choice that I could either come back to this earth and live more life or stay with him there in heaven. We both knew that returning to this earth would be a struggle because I told him that I wanted to return to this earth if I could help myself and others. He knew that I didn't want to live more life on this earth if life meant being trapped in an unresponsive body, unable to communicate. The look of love in his eyes filled me with joy then, and as I remembered that feeling of joy I felt then I'm filled with joy anew now. I don't know how I did this, but then I remember that I was in a hospital room looking at my husband holding my hand and talking to me. Only I wasn't seen from the vantage point through my own eyes. I recognized that was my body, but I was outside of it, looking at my body from above. As I viewed this scene, I felt a strong desire to return to this earth and live more life with my husband if I could communicate with him and help him. I was understood and the desires of my heart were heard. The next thing I remember was being trapped in my body while others cared for my physical needs. I can remember that I could tell what the nurses were thinking about me by how they touched me. I knew if they thought I was going to live or not through their touch. I knew if they thought they were caring for a dead person whose spirit wasn't there. I remember trying to scream out, look, I'm alive, I'm in here, I'm going to live. I relaxed and trusted that person much more if I knew that they knew they were caring for a living person. I obviously could read their thoughts. While in my spirit body, I remember communicating telepathically, this is how Jesus and I communicated in that heavenly garden. It was so easy, it required no effort, you thought the thoughts, and they were communicated, 
Speaking through my physical mouth is so difficult and frustrating, and sometimes you're misunderstood, and they get the wrong meaning of what you're trying to say. The phrase the world uses of being soulmates is referring to the communication between two souls, spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. Communicating on a spiritual level is a very profound experience. I believe I've had this spiritual gift ever since my near-death experience, and this gift profoundly blesses my life as I use it. I feel this great need to communicate on a spiritual level with others, and one of the only ways I'm able to communicate in this way is through writing. I have to prepare myself mentally to be able to communicate on a spiritual level. You have the time to do this as you are writing your home, without distractions. We are what we think. I find trivial thoughts distracting. I rarely watch TV, and then only if it stimulates good thoughts. I listen to different music now and gravitate towards the ethereal. My near-death experience has changed me. I desire righteousness, and I abhor evil. I'm quite thankful for my accident, even though it has changed my physical abilities inversely. But at the same time, my spiritual abilities have blossomed enormously. Ever since I woke up from my coma, I've had an attitude of peaceful hopefulness. I believe the reason why I still live. One of the reasons I came back to this earth to live is because I'm supposed to testify that the spirit world is real and beautiful, and that Jesus is who he says he is. He is our brother, and we knew him well as a friendly brother in the spirit world. This knowledge, this belief, affects every facet of my life, and my desire to communicate this to others. I believe this is why I came back, to live more life to relate this to all who will listen. That does it for our first story, moving right along into our second story. After dinner on a Sunday evening, I went upstairs to change clothes and my wife was with me. When we entered the bathroom, my wife noticed me turning white and then completely blue as I fell to the floor. I was not breathing, had no pulse, and my heart was not beating. A friend of my son came and gave me CPR until the ambulance arrived. According to the ambulance report, it took the paramedics six minutes to arrive after the 911 phone call and another four minutes to start reviving me. It took them another 10 minutes before they could get a weak pulse and shallow breathing by shocking me with a defibrillator three times. On the way to the hospital, my heart quit beating another two times and they had to shock me twice again. I did not know what had happened to me in the physical realm, but I remember all the experiences in the spirit world. At first, I felt like I was floating in a dark space. I realized soon after that I was dead. I remember my mind asking man, I'm dead, why am I dead, and what happened to me? Right after these questions came to my mind, the next event happened. I realized I was no longer in my physical body. Some force like a vacuum cleaner, only hundreds of times greater, was sucking every pore from my body. The next thing I realized was me being in complete darkness. It was like being in a refrigerator at midnight with the door closed on a moonless and starless night. I couldn't see my hand when I put it to my face. I sensed evil around me, and even though I thought I could move about, I froze because of fear. I thought I was alone until I saw three demon-like figures standing by my feet and talking in three different languages. I was laying on a cold slab in a dark chamber of what I found out later to be hell. While the demons were talking and looking down at me, there was a tiny light coming from behind them, and I could see their silhouettes. They were about three to four feet high with skinny bodies, arms, and legs. The light behind them was getting bigger and closer, so I quit looking at the demons and concentrated on the light. Because of an earlier experience in my life, I knew the light to be Jesus Christ. He engulfed me in his light and took my spirit and soul out of hell. He replaced them in my physical body to live again. When I awoke in the emergency room, my wife told me what happened in the physical realm and I told her what happened in the spirit realm. While I was in the hospital, no one could get a response to their questions, so they assumed brain damage. After three hours of lying there and only repeating, I died. I went to hell and it was horrible. While tears were streaming down my face, I finally awoke. Since that time, I have been clinically dead another two times from cardiac arrests and suffered two additional heart attacks. Since that time, I have been attacked and harassed by demons to this very day. I wrote a book about all my true encounters with death, hell, demons, angels, visions, and godsend dreams. 
The book title is The Key Holder of Death and Hell. It was published in November 2009. That does it for our final story. What did you guys think about both of them? Did you think in the first story that she communicated with Jesus? Do you think she was allowed to come back to grow? In the second story, do you think the experiencer is still being harassed by demons, even after all of these years? Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Remember, keep it respectful. Until the next video, stay blessed.